Science in pajamas. Boo, 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 boo. Hi, welcome back. We're still talking about parts of ecology, and we are moving on right now to um, discuss energy pyramids. <clears throat> so what an energy pyramid is, it kind of takes the idea of like a food chain and uses it to figure out how much energy moves between each trophic level. So I have an example of one up here, where down here we have our producers. So we have the producers. And then we have our primary consumers, the first things that are doing the eating which are the butterflies. The butterflies will feed on the flowers as adults. They'll get the nectar. But as caterpillars, they're also going to eat leaves and grass. Now the mice feed on the butterflies. Now the butterflies were the first thing doing the eating. That's why they're the primary consumer. The mice are the second thing doing the eating. So they are the secondary consumers. They feed on the primary consumer. Then we have the snakes. The snakes are the tertiary consumer. They feed on the mice. And then we have our hawk. The hawk is our quaternary consumer. It feeds on the tertiary consumer, the snakes. <coughs> Now, in terms of what this is, like we said, the energy pyramid, we can also label this at, in terms of the trophic level. So this would be the first trophic level. The producers are always the first trophic level because that is where the glucose starts. Remember, the trees, the flowers, the grass, they are making glucose via photosynthesis. There we go. So they are our first trophic level, then the organism that feeds on them, our primary consumer, would be on the secondary, or sorry, second trophic level. Because they are the going, or they are the second place the glucose is going to go. It starts off here, and then it travels to the butterflies when they feed on the plants. Our mice are the third trophic level because they get the glucose from the butterflies who got it from the plants. The snakes are on the fourth trophic level because the snakes got it from the mice who got it from the, sorry, the snakes got the glucose from the mice. The mice got it from the butterflies. The butterflies got it from the plants. The plants made it. And the hawk is on the fifth trophic level. The hawk gets its glucose from eating the snakes, who gets their glucose from eating the mice, who get their glucose from eating the butterflies, who get their glucose from eating the plants, who made their own glucose. So that's kind of what the energy pyramid looks at. There's one more aspect to it. Remember, it's energy pyramid. So that means we're also going to look at how much energy is passed on to each level. Now, since our first trophic level, the producers, since they make the glucose, we're going to say that they start off with 100% energy. They have 100% of the energy. Now, as you go up, only 10% of the energy actually passes from one level to the next. And that's because the plants have their own biological processes that they need that energy for. Just the process of living, of running cellular reactions, of doing cell respiration and photosynthesis, of reproduction, all of that all of those tasks require energy. So 90% stays at that level. 
only 10% gets passed on. So of the 100%, the butterflies only get 10%. Now the butterflies are going to use most of that for their own metabolic processes, you know, running their um, body and their cells and their systems, reproduction, flapping those wings, cell respiration, etc. So only 10% of that amount gets moved on to the next level. So this trophic level, the third trophic level, only gets 1% of the energy that there was to start. The snakes are only going to get 10% of that, so 0.1% of the energy. And then the hawk is going to get 10% of what's left, 0.01% of the original energy makes it to the hawk. And that's why a lot of times, as you see, organisms that are higher up in trophic level, why they'll oftentimes feed on a lot more variety of organisms because they have to get a lot more energy to make up for the fact that they're getting so little from their food. Now, it may seem hard to believe and you know a little bit weird, but that actually is how it goes. And not only that, we can also look at this in terms of biomass. So the actual amount of physical biological mass at each level. It's no coincidence that we draw it as a triangle or a pyramid because there needs to be a lot more in the first trophic level. There needs to be a lot more in terms of pure mass. There needs to be a lot more producers in an ecosystem than anything else because remember each trophic level is dependent on the one below it. So the fifth trophic level is dependent on the fourth. The fourth on the third, third on the second, the second on the first. What that means is there has to be enough of the producers to be able to satisfy and provide energy to the second trophic level while still having a large enough population that they don't go extinct that they survive and reproduce and keep going. Imagine if you had more snakes than mice. What would happen if you had more snakes than mice? The snakes would eat all of the mice, which means that that entire trophic level would be gone, which means now the snakes have no food, so the snakes would die off, which means that the hawks have no food, so they would die off. The butterfly population would then get really, really big and could possibly eat all of the plants. That's why we always talk about ecosystems and how there's a delicate balance to them. They have evolved naturally to create these niches that different organisms feed, fit into. If you take an organism out of that niche, either something else is going to take its place or it could have drastic negative effects on the entire ecosystem. We just said, take out all the mice, or sorry, we had too many snakes, they ate all the mice, now the snakes starve, now the hawk starves, with no, pre no mice feeding on them, the butterflies massively overproduce to the point where they eat all the food, now we have a collapsed ecosystem. That's just kind of what I wanted to talk about in terms of flow of energy and the energy pyramids. I hope it helped you to understand what was going on. And yeah, until next time, you guys, take care and I'll see you later. All right. Have bye, guys.